Nathaniel here, and uh, welcome to a bit of data science and scikit-learn, where we learn just a little bit of data science and a ton of scikit-learn. Um, this is probably the most important episode, so please do tune in. Um, we're going to be talking about the best practices of data science, and we've not been practicing those best practices thus far. Um, that's because we needed to get a lot of fundamental material down. We need to show you how to get data, we need to show you how to use estimators, we need to show you how to use meta estimators, and we need to show you how to use some like model selection type stuff, or else some of this stuff doesn't make much sense. Um, okay, let's just get started. Go ahead, we'll import our data set. And the one thing that we're gonna be importing that's special that you haven't seen before is chain test split. Um, I know I've said this metaphor before, but if you're taking a test, right, and your teacher gives you the answer key to that test, and you study that answer key, and then you take the test and you do really well, does that tell you anything about your performance in the real world? Does it tell you how well you understand that material? No. Uh, instead, what you need to do is you need to get some practice material, some training material, some previous tests, study those, and then take a new test that you haven't seen before. And only then can you tell how well you do. Um, so when you have data, when you're doing machine learning, when you're training a model on your data, you can't test it on the model that you trained on. So what you'll do beforehand is you'll generally train test split. So you'll split your data. Um, in this case, uh, you give it some X's, you give it some Y's, and it will split uh, all these arrays into an X train, X test, and a Y train, Y test. You can specify the test size as well. I'll show you the shapes, so you get a good in uh, intuition. Um, now notice, if I train a model on the train data and I test it on the test data, it does worse, right? It doesn't do as well. Um, uh, let's actually, I don't know if you guys remember how well it did previously, but if you clf.score um, the x train and the y train, uh, it does a lot better. Uh, the score is much better because it's already seen this test. Uh, the x test and the y test, it hasn't seen this before. The x train and the y train, it's seen it before. It's studied it, it's memorized it. Um, so you want to do this before you do anything, anytime. Uh, right before you, you look at your data, you want to test or you want to, uh, you want to split it. Uh, so this is incredibly important. Now the following section below, I'm going to be looking at two other methods which are incredibly important. One which is, uh, well both are cross-validation, but they do it in different ways. Uh, one does very simple cross-validation, it just gives you a nice function that you can use, and the other one does a little bit more complex cross-validation. Um, which means you can do some pretty sophisticated stuff. And then finally, at the end, I'm going to talk about these uh, two types of cross-validation, one type of cross-validation that we've seen before, and compare all three, and when you should use these three. Okay, let's go on. Um, do you remember what cross-validation is? So cross-validation is a way that we can use our training data in order to get good estimates of how well our model will perform on data we haven't seen before. Okay? It's not the best. The best estimate is using the test data, but it's good estimates. Um, and this is how we're going to use it. The simple method that I provide is called cross val score. Super nice. Takes an estimator, takes an X, takes a Y. Uh, it takes some other stuff as well. Uh, one of these other things that it takes is a scoring method and a CV. Finally, it also takes groups, which we're going to be talking about in a little bit. So let's, let's first talk about the basic use, then scoring, then CV. Okay, so we use a linear kernel uh, using a support vector classifier. We score it. Literally, what it's going to do is it's going to take our data. It's going to split it into different parts. It's going to train a model on one half of the data. It's going to test it on the other half. It's going to train a model on the other half of the data. It's going to test it on the first half. In such a way, we can get an unbiased, somewhat unbiased. It's unbiased, um, uh, but it's a, a little bit of variance. Uh, estimate of how well our data is going to do outside. So we had a couple of scores. Um, and the number of scores depends on whether the CV is five. So we do CV of seven, we're gonna get seven scores. We do a CV of two, we're only gonna get two scores. Um, you can then take all of these validation scores, these cross-validation scores, compute the mean, you compute the variance. Um, so like, hey, looks like I've got a mean of uh, 0.97 with a variance of four. Uh, so I'd expect to at least do better uh, than a, um, I guess it's a standard deviation, excuse me. 
than at least the 93 on the actual test data. You can do even more here. You don't have to use the, the standard accuracy. You can provide it your own scoring method. So for example, we use F1 macro. And finally, you, you don't have to use the vanilla cross-validation uh, that they provide. You can provide your own. For example, you could do a shuffle split, in which case we shuffle the data. Um, we go ahead and we do that. We see something slightly different. <clears throat> Final thing you can do, I don't do this often, is you can do a cross-validation predict. And so this will get an unbiased prediction. Uh, no need to look at this. Um, from your estimator uh, that you can use. So... Uh, all of these predicted uh, estimates are for your train set, one, but they've been predicted by models not trained on them, so they're not cheating. Okay, so we go ahead here. Okay, um, so that's the first part. The second part, we're going to do it in a little bit more complexible way. And this gets down to what's actually going on, the nitty gritty of what's going on in cross validation. We'll start off with k-fold cross-validation. It takes a couple of parameters. It takes number of splits and shuffle and a random state. You don't need to worry about that. What we're going to be using is number of splits 2 and shuffle equals true. I'm going to show you what it does. So let me run this first and talk about it. So we have x's. The x's are a, b, c, and d. And I printed some stuff down here. There's not any a, b's, c's, or d's. So what's going on? So in k-fold cross-validation, we split our x's, and it will provide me indices. Some indices for the train and indices for the test set. And I can use these indices to take a model and train it on the training data, and then test it on the testing data. So that's literally what's happening. And all those times when you've seen cross-validation before and you've been wondering what's happening, this is exactly what's happening. It splits your data. And notice what the split is. I first split 1, 3 into my train set, and I split 0, 2 into my test set. Next, I split 0, 2 into my train set, and I put 1, 3 into my test set. So just kind of like reverse. So I get every single thing tested in an unbiased manner. Um, the more of them I get, the um, less variance I'm going to be having um, uh, if you average them together. Um, but you don't actually... Uh, Generally, the rule of thumb is you want to have around 10 folds. 10 folds is, is, is pretty good, uh, 10 to 5 folds. Um, and so I can show you very quickly what, what it would look like if we did do 4 folds, right? If we did 4 folds, uh, we would have uh, 4 examples in our test set. So uh, if we have 4 examples in our test set, we need to have 1, 0, 3, and 2. Um, so that's exactly what's going on behind the scenes. Um, the nice thing about this is you can do a lot more. Uh, I mean, you can you can train your data, you can test your data, you can like you know, spit out pictures during cross validation. So this is why you want to expose this functionality. Um, there are some different ways you can cross validate. You've got stratify. Um, so uh, what this will do is uh, the folds are preserving the percentage of samples in class. So for example, if you if you only have like a couple of classes with so right down here. Um, I only have a couple of classes where I've got zeros. Most of them I don't have zeros. So if I go ahead and I split, you know, we'll make sure that I include a zero in all of my test sets. So uh, I've got one test set with two zeros. I've got one test set with one. I've got one test set with one. Um, it's, it's not going to have any test set without a zero. So that's often good if you've got uh, class imbalances. And then finally, group data. Um, this assumption is that some of your data is just, um, uh, the, the generating process behind your data, like you're collecting data from patients, right? And some of this data is from the same patient. Um, the idea here is that uh, uh, you would like to know if a model trained on a particular set of groups will generalize well to unseen groups. So you don't want any um, data from group one in the train and the test set. So again, you know, you're, you're getting data from patients. You've got like heart rate from patients. You've got 20 patients, and each patient gives you 10 samples. You don't want to use your data from patient A in order to predict uh, the heart rate from patient A. It seems like cheating. Um, so in this case, you want to do a group k-fold. Um, I can just sort of show you this right here. Um, and if you actually look at this, um, you'll notice we've got uh, groups one, two, and three. And you'll notice group one, you'll never see. Um, uh, so group one right is right here, uh, zero, one, and two. Um, 
So you don't use any training data from group one in order to predict group one. The final split that we can talk about, you guys should have a really good understanding of what's happening now under the hood. Um, and please, if you don't, there's a, there's a ton of reading here. I'm going to be including some links below. Um, and um, and you can you can also go to my GitHub and sort of check out check out this page that I'm using right here. Uh, the final type of um, cross validation you want to do is with a time series analysis. I'm just going to let this sort of speak to itself. So we got a time series split. Uh, we specify what the minimum size is going to be, and then we have our time series split of uh, 0, 1, 2, trying to predict 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, trying to predict 4, and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, trying to predict 5. Uh, the thing is, you don't want to use any future examples to predict past examples. This is a time series. You only, only want to use past examples to predict future examples. Okay. That was a lot. This is probably the most important lesson, so I just want to go over it. Uh, one more time from the end. Um, all of these methods down here, these super, well, I mean, somewhat complex methods, um, these all are used for making visualizations, data visualizations, doing very complex stuff. For the most part, you're going to be using this cross -file score method. Uh, this is incredibly useful. Uh, you use this almost all the time. The only time that you don't use this is when a model already has a CV method. So we have this lasso CV method. If a model already has a CV method, it's been optimized. You want to use the model's CV method instead of any other type of method. So this is a little bit of confusion while we have both cross-validation outside and inside models. We only have cross-validation inside models when there's an efficient optimization, something going on behind the scenes. Um, okay, so I hope that is useful. The thing that you should know is you should always split your data. You should always train test split your data. And when you're trying to select what is the best model, always use cross-validation. Uh, these, these are always do's. Uh, check out this um, video again and again until it's sort of drilled into your head. Okay, thanks a ton. Uh, there's still more important, or there's still important stuff that comes after, but this is certainly the most important. Okay, I'll see you all soon.